that note, um, <laughs> thank you for being here. Um, I'm aware that an uh, internal email that I sent out about the department's pursuit policy did get disseminated to the media, which, which is fine. Um, it, just, to, um, just to summarize, we've had a restrictive pursuit po policy for many years, and there's been but for a few exceptions when our officers may pursue. But of concern to me is that I'm seeing we've had a few incidences where the officers are rightfully pursuing, they're in line with state law, they're in line with policy, but the pursuit itself just is not essential, not given the risk reward that goes, goes with engaging in a pursuit. Um, and I just, I just feel as though we need to step back and really make the policy even more restrictive. Um, and by that I mean allowing but for a select number of highly trained individuals to ch chase it all. Um, and I would rather err on the side of safety, um, even if it does mean temporarily uh, not being as active in a space as I feel we maybe need to be. Um, I really am here to answer any questions or concerns that you all have. Um, if I may help you. Does this mean starting today it's effective a no zero chase policy, but does that mean in the meantime you'll train officers will eventually? So the question is, it's two-pronged. It's effective immediately today that there is a no chase policy. We, a year ago, identified a handful of officers who we got coordinated with Georgia State Patrol to train with on how they do their, um, their pit maneuver um, to get a, a, an emergency vehicle driving course, um, expanded training for them. That's a good inroad. That unit has been very effective. Uh, they've done the job safely and effectively. But what I would say is we need to take that training to even another level to allow that unit to continue down the road of ever engaging in a pursuit. Can you elaborate on some of the details about how the pursuit will change in terms of that unit? What are they doing differently to what officers are currently doing? I mean, that's a really good question. I think the fundamental difference is they've had greater experience in driving at high speeds. They tend to be more senior officers and more cautious. Uh, and there's just, it's just like anything. If you, if you invest more time and attention into training in a particular skill, you get more proficient in it. And so we made a concerted effort to invest their time and into training specifically in this area. And they've done a very nice job. But the problem is, the way our policy is written now, even if they're highly trained and they engage in a pursuit, a unit in a surrounding area may engage on the periphery of that pursuit to assist, even though they lack that training. Now, in theory, they shouldn't be pursuing, but I'm not operating in theory. I'm operating what I know is occurring. And the policy simple, simply has to be very restrictive for us to navigate this safe to, safely and effectively. Are you concerned that with this being out, criminals, carjackers, I'll be honest with you, when I look at our greatest successes, it's not through car pursuits. We have, I would argue, one of the premier fugitive units in the country. We have a criminal intelligence unit that does phenomenal work. We continually arrest people, violent offenders, through our investigative effort, efforts. And what I will also say to you is our APEX unit, which is our primary tactical unit that day in and day out focuses on getting guns off the streets and does a, a fantastic job in conversing with them, they don't pursue. So somehow they're still hitting these benchmarks of success without engaging in vehicle pursuits. And what I would say to you is Pursuits have been going on ever since, I've been on close to 25 years, and they've been going on forever. And when you go out and you see a couple of these and you're looking at the person where the child is in the back seat or the grandmother or the mother went to the store to get a loaf of bread and they didn't make it because some knucklehead threw through, flew through an intersection at 90 miles an hour, it scars you. And 
I just, I simply, I don't want to see us cost someone their life in pursuit of an auto theft person or a burglar when the courts aren't even going to hold them accountable. I mean, how can we justify that? And I just, I think that we, ha we are better than that. Chief, in talking to some police officers this afternoon, they made the point that by and large, the people they're chasing are people who never received enough punishment in the first place to be locked up. And that's, so they know that they've got more than a traffic stop in their record. And so they're saying that the problem is larger than your mm -hmm. department. It goes back to it goes back to the repeat offender issue, and that's what we always look at. We look at okay, we get the person in custody, and how many even how many times have we arrested them, and we know they're getting right back out. Maybe they'll get signature bond, maybe they'll get a low bond, but the system is broken. But that doesn't that doesn't, and that is absolutely a part of my thought process. If nothing is happening to the individuals when we're locking them up and yet we're absorbing this level of risk and liability. I mean, that just is not a good business model. I would rather us put greater emphasis on our investigative techniques, get a warrant, get fugitive to get them at four in the morning. In terms of the training you're talking about, is it just internally that you guys are sort of working on the training or are you branching out and asking other departments in other states or federally or anything? We have asked, we have leaned heavily on Georgia State Patrol. They're so proficient in this area. So we have leaned on them in the past, and that is who I will be reaching out to as we move this along. Yep. And just to be clear, this doesn't affect foot chases, helicopters, or anything, just the... Correct. So the, um, no, this is strictly vehicular pursuits, because if any of you have ever seen a car fly by you, you know, at 90 miles an hour. You don't stand a prayer if you're, if you're in a crosswalk, if you're on a sidewalk, if you, even if you're driving through an intersection. I mean, it's a missile, and it's a couple of tons. And so uh, we will rely on other techniques. Uh, key amongst them, of course, it, yeah, is the air unit. The air unit is instrumental in so far as uh, fleeing vehicles go. Is this a decision you came up with this week, last month, maybe before then? <laughs> um, you sound like one of my employees, like, <laughs> what were you thinking? Um, you know what, this has given me heartburn for some time, and I think it's something we really started working on last year when we, we started co collaborating with Georgia State Patrol to get our, our auto theft unit into a space where they were better trained. But even with those steps, I've just realized over the last month or so, it's not enough. Like mainly the two men who died last month, was that the <coughs> part I think that I think that, that brought it home. Um, the chase meant state law, it meant our department policy, um, and it's still, it's, it's hard to swallow. Thank you everyone, appreciate your time. Thank y'all.